thank you very much for joining very prestigious event our thanks to our chairman uh, mr ikram segal who has uh, requested as whose request the four panelists have joined uh, this uh, webinar and i'm sure this is going to be a very interesting and thought provoking webinar we have one speaker honorable dr moeed yusuf and together with him there are three panelists two joining from usa and our own dr huma bakai now i request dr moeed yusuf to open the discussions with this address assalam alaikum good morning uh, to uh, people in the west and, and good afternoon and evening here uh, first of all thank you very much ikram saab and the institute um, for for this opportunity and points are for the introduction uh, to lay out what i think is the the future here you know um, as an official i have still uh, yet to learn the ability to curb my independence in terms of my views and i think it's not beneficial for um this kind of audience for me to just plainly lay out uh, what my um wishes are where do we want to go is the real question and let me begin by saying that the current administration that's taking over um in the us uh, the new administration Uh, a lot of those people are well known to pakistani officials and interlocutors and vice versa uh, because a lot of them served uh, in the obama administration as well um the difference is that we are now going to reengage in a completely different world um and this is a critical point that both sides must internalize because otherwise uh, i'm afraid we will start from uh where we left and while we were very very close partners there were still issues uh that did separate us at the time and created some level of discomfort that afghanistan the the main reason for the disconnect at the time was that afghanistan was not reaching this point where there was an active dialogue process a peace process and timelines to achieve peace in afghanistan we have that now the entire world has acknowledged including the us pakistan's role in this so there's no reason for us to be uh, stuck in the old groove on this we have a clear uh, line in front of us that we need to cross to achieve peace we have milestones we need to stick to that and and achieve them second there is a major change in terms of the us itself a very different conversation uh, the internal issues that we've seen unfortunately so um, perhaps we are not at the stage we were in 2016 where the external facing policy was just as important as the internal one uh, i suppose the internal elements will be uh, more important going forward for some time third we are dealing with a very different india and of course india is sort of the elephant in the room every time for conversations with pakistan uh, but this is not the india that uh, was uh, left behind uh, in 2016 even even though it was the same government in india we are seeing an india that is now being called out for its uh, fascism for its uh, approach towards uh, exclusion of millions and millions of people for its approach in uh disputed territories like kashmir by the western press and the us congress and the british parliament we're not talking of pakistan here we've also seen um you know the real face of india perpetrating an anti pakistan narrative uh, with this eu disinfo lab we put out what india's daily activities in pakistan are in a public dossier etc etc so we are dealing with the india which may be seen as a counterweight uh, to china by some but frankly for the region uh, is a country that now has a spat or a conflict with every neighbor and has become a liability if you look at the the situation the security situation and the violence it's um, infinitely infinitely lower than than what it was so that um, in the face conversation about um, you know the security concerns don't need to happen the same way now 
this to me opens a real opportunity for pakistan and the incoming administration to have a conversation for once where we have a truly bilateral relationship not a relationship from an uh, afghan lens or an india lens or a china lens but really a relationship that is about pakistan and the us it may be more realistic it may be more modest but a relationship that truly looks at both sides bilaterally and sees where mutual interest lies let me just uh, in the last part crystallize for you what pakistan would be looking for the first thing i want to put on the table is that pakistan is formally as dictated and approved and instructed by the prime minister on an economic security paradigm pakistan's focus is economic security and human security and military security are built around that because if we don't have the resources through economic security nothing else matters what does that mean number one it means pakistan is interested in the world and in, in, you know in the context of the conversation the us benefiting from pakistan's geo economic location we're not talking of geo strategic location that is true that exists but we're talking of the geo economic location and treat us as a melting pot for positive global economic interest not as a staging ground for competition between great powers so you know there may be conversation about military bases in the past we are offering economic bases now that's the economic security paradigm it has three pillars number 1 connectivity cpac is one big example of that why do we want peace in afghanistan is because we want access to central asia sea based connectivity is the third and we even are open to eastward connectivity but of course um india's outlook behavior and regressive attitude makes that impossible right now but connectivity is one second we want to talk about development partnerships not assistance of course pakistan will remain dependent on assistance from the world for some time but the focus here in the us pakistan conversation should be on true development partnerships and the third and last pillar of this is what we call responsibility within to pakistani citizens and responsibility beyond borders in terms of regional and near neighborhood peace uh, so there are old agenda points they'll be discussed but please take this as a new conversation that pakistan is offering on mutual benefit a uh, mutual interest that are truly going to benefit both sides now the worry is that old minds will start old conversations we want to avoid that so we need to engage early us needs to benefit from pakistan's position location relationship with china the other diplomatic issues in the region we can help with uh, and pakistan is definitely interested in improving this relationship even further on a completely new platform and track and quite frankly if now we don't see a response uh, very many naysayers will very quickly conclude uh, that it's us that is pushing pakistan away and uh, under the pretext that india is more important which frankly if not today tomorrow everybody will wake up to the reality that it's become so um uh, uh, sort of weak and divided internally that forget about a counterweight it's going to be a liability even for its partners that's my very candid view thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr mohit yusuf for setting the 360 degrees scene for the us pakistan relationship a trusted friend of kcfr chairman professor mantar we are delighted to have you here enlighten us with your views thank you very much uh, to you to ikram to everyone who is listening thank you for this opportunity and i'm sure dan markey uh, would join me in saying <clears throat> this is the best time uh, when uh, for us to engage at the outset of a new american administration to try to do what moid yosef has said to try to see how we can make this conversation be fruitful rather than stuck in just the the, the paradigms of the past Let me make a few comments about the atmosphere as I see it from the American side. What has happened with Pakistan in the United States is that it gets less attention, and that need not be a bad thing. 
The attention that Pakistan got, certainly in the time 10 years ago when I was ambassador, let's not forget it was 10 years ago this month that the Raymond Davis case uh, began and that, uh, and, and that our problems really hit a peak. At that time, Pakistan got lots of, in, uh, of attention in Washington. It was not good attention. Now it's time to create, uh, as, as Moed said, to recreate a new way of doing things. Now, this new situation gives us the opportunity to move past what he referred to as the Afghan lens or focus, uh, the terrorist focus. These remain very important issues for both Pakistan and America, but they should not be, and I agree, they should not be the only ones. Rather, there will be a new style among the Americans. Where I think it's important for Pakistanis to focus is this new style will be uh, a lot more multilateral than we've had in the past. And by this, I mean that the way that the new administration in the person of many people you know, the people like Tony Blinken, Jake Sullivan, Bill Burns, the people who are coming in at the senior levels of our foreign policy are going to be looking at solving problems through multilateral means. So I don't mean to knock uh, a strut up from under what Mr. Moed Yosef said about a new bilateral relationship, but do be aware that the new team is going to focus very multilaterally. It's interesting to see that, for example, with Europe, the Americans will engage on climate change, on the pandemic, on trade, and on digital governance. These are all important things, but what's missing here? These are not things that are focused on a region. These are things that are global issues. I urge you to expect from the Americans that you will be hearing about these global issues and the way that the bilateral relationship will grow, in my opinion, will be the means by which America and Pakistan, in a fresh way, find common ground on the uh, climate change issues, find common ground on the pandemic, this allows for the certain possibilities that I think the Pakistani government wants to focus on, to get away from the old reputation of Pakistan. To be sure, as I have always said in the past and will say in the future, not only does America need to reform itself at home, and that will be a big focus of Joe Biden, whether it's medical care, whether it's the violence that we saw last week, the problems in America, Pakistan must also, in order to be a good partner, focus on the kinds of reform that we have been talking about. The idea that the, the economy is still crippled by the fact that the taxation system in Pakistan is so weak. It's still crippled by the fact that there are inequities everywhere. In other words, domestic issues in Pakistan and domestic issues in the United States will be important in order to build together on this. So that's my, my, my focus. I urge Pakistan to do just what Moeed said, be an economic, international player, be a diplomatic player. And it's time that Pakistan, I think, can put behind it the reputation of being a country that is a problem in Afghanistan, a problem in terrorism, and itself a problem in governance. So I think you have an enormous opportunity. And I think those of us who are friends in Pakistan and the United States see real possibilities now. Thank you very much. Now my privilege is to introduce Professor Dr. Huma Bakai. She is the member board of KCFR. Uh, I am going to talk about how things are felt on the ground and what is the general understanding. Uh, you see, for Biden, reset to my understanding is a lot of damage control, force correction and image building, both internally and externally. And he has to walk the tightrope of being bipartisan. Now, in that construct, I don't see uh, a lot of space for, uh, if I may say, Pakistan. And it's not just Biden uh, framed his entire election campaign as a response to Trump's presidency and Trumpism. It seems now that his entire presidency will also be spent on damage control, force correction, and uh, image building for the United States. I really don't see much of a difference between Biden and Trump's presidency, uh, for Pakistan especially. 
because i think pakistan once again will be engaged for specifics we will never be more than a contingent partner our engagement is contingent to either terrorism or afghanistan or perhaps now this whole new politics of camps and how it is unfolding in south asia uh unfortunately as as a commoner i think trust deficit and public uh, humiliation continues to haunt pakistan us relations in fact in pakistan some of us see public humiliation by united states as a tool of foreign policy we also think that us will keep pakistan's nuclear policy and assets under close scrutiny um it will continue to exercise pressure through fatter and international financial institutions and of course we can go into the debate that these are independent institutions and all that but that is the perception that exists in pakistan and in foreign relations perception is sometimes much bigger than reality reciprocation on kashmir despite indian atrocities has not happened not even not even the lip service that pakistan would perhaps be happy with something they can sell to their own public uh unfortunately that has also not happened uh and that remains uh, an issue when private conversations happen most assessments agree that the greatest geopolitical risk of 2021 concerns relations between the two global powers the united states and china moi just referred to it it's now being called the camp politics for pakistan that is where the world uh, word balance uh, sort of comes how we look at pakistan us relations right now is achieving balance us remains an important and key ally for pakistan uh, but that key word that defines pakistan real, uh, us relations is a balance biden may not pair pakistan with china as the target of washington's indo pacific strategy to exert dual american and indian pressure as this may put pakistan firmly in the chinese camp and thus lose to beijing's strategic plans but the truth of the matter is that pakistan has already started calling itself a strategic partner of beijing and sees a, a, a convergence which is more deep with china than perhaps it ever was with the united states how much pakistan will do what it can it will facilitate not because us is asking us to because it suits our own uh, interest and it's important for us we are looking when we say balanced relationship with the united states we are looking at functional relationship with both afghanistan and even india but having said this i think us will continue to remain committed in doing the arm twisting it initially did for both kabul and taliban it's only then that pakistan can play um, a role which can be of value in this entire situation so ladies and gentlemen this is largely my take on the restart that will happen between pakistan and us it is a tricky relationship and i personally think it will so remain thank you so much thank you professor dr huma bakai uh, the last panelist uh, ladies and gentlemen is dr daniel murphy who is a senior research professor at st johns hopkins university school of advanced international studies dr murphy thank you for joining us great to see all of you uh, so it is true and i will agree with those who have gone before me that um, president elect biden uh and his incoming team are uh, both familiar with Pakistan and with the region uh and bring a uh, great expertise and experience uh with them into government um but also that they would like to i think uh begin uh a new chapter a more constructive chapter in relations with Pakistan in particular um remember if we go back uh not so long ago that uh this is this is uh Biden who during the Obama administration frequently made the point that Pakistan more than Afghanistan 
should be uh, Washington's principal strategic focus uh, in the region. Um, he appreciates, uh, and I think those closest to him also appreciate both Pakistan's scale and Pakistan's strategic uh, significance and human significance uh, on its own terms. But having said that, uh, my recollection is also that uh, now President-elect Biden was then uh, profoundly frustrated uh, with attempts to uh, engage with Pakistan's leadership and to gain a, a better understanding about Pakistan really wanted or needed from the United States uh, in the region. In other words, uh, I recall him specifically saying things like, um, why can't Pakistan make it clear to us precisely what its vision for a future of Afghanistan ought to be? Why can't they share that with us in a way that we can work with them on? That kind of frustration, uh, despite the desire to turn the page, I think is probably the most uh, immediate thing to come to mind within this new group uh, of, or this returning group of policymakers. And so it's that much more important um, and, and uh, essential that efforts be made early on uh, to revise that thinking uh, if possible. And I will agree with the other speakers so far that finding a way to escape what I call the instrument, uh, instrumentalizing of Pakistan, the seeing of Pakistan always through some other strategic lens uh, will be as difficult as it has been in the past. Um, it's possible, but it's going to be hard. And, you know, uh, Moeed was, um, again, very constructive and forward looking in his characterization of the situation in Afghanistan. But I will tell you that seen here from, from Washington, D.C., uh, the current situation in Afghanistan looks a great deal more precarious uh, and uncertain uh, than uh, the way that he framed it. The Trump administration has promised to pull out uh, U.S. forces by May, which may have been fine if we had made greater progress in uh, negotiations between the Kabul government and the Taliban. But at this point, uh, there are serious questions about the, whether they can produce anything that would approximate uh, a stable arrangement uh, by that date. And there are serious people, including if you read uh, uh, pieces in, in foreign affairs recently by Barney Rubin, among others, people who are suggesting that there will be for, further delays and there ought to be delays in that uh, US uh, final troop pullout. Um, but even then, uh, these types of delays, six months or, or whatever, uh, still raise questions about whether the United, can, United States can achieve even its minimal counterterrorism goals uh, under the circumstances. But last, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't share my, my serious concern and suggest that this concern is not my own, but one that is more widely felt in Washington, that there is a, a terrible potential uh, for another regional crisis involving India and Pakistan, possibly also China, uh, at the outset or the early days of a Biden administration, which would profoundly color and shape the administration's perception of the region. An India-Pakistan new crisis, potential small war or even something worse, is the type of thing uh, that would, of course, change and shape the way that all of the top uh, administration officials perceive Pakistan and perhaps uh, reduce or limit the prospects for a more constructive path in U.S.-Pakistan relations going forward. So on that uh, somewhat troubling note, uh, I, will, I will pass it back to you. And, and again, thank you all for, uh, for the opportunity to address you uh, this evening in Pakistan. Thank you. My question is for uh, Mr. Moeed Yusuf. How do you see the present setup in the United States in terms of engaging our foreign missions as we talk about B2B projects and increase our exports? And secondly, uh, my question is about the tourism potential between the two countries. Yes, Mr. Moeed Yusuf. Thank you. This is not, this part is not me speaking. Uh, I wouldn't be saying this if this wasn't a whole of government, uh, whole of system uh, approach to this. Um, but 
the missions we the prime minister has a dedicated economic outreach initiative it's called the eoi uh, and essentially the idea is that pakistan's diplomacy um has to be centered around economic diplomacy and if you want to center it around economic diplomacy then your missions have to be much stronger with targets with kpis knowing what you've got to market just like uh, businesses operate right and then also fdi so our missions are gearing up and being pushed very hard to focus uh, in these areas on the us side i think dan or, or cameron perhaps could answer better i would like to ask question the, with the mr uh, mr dan is regarding uh, with the uh, pakistan and us relationship we have been alive with us for last more than 67 68 years but in return uh, we we never got any economic uh, you know benefit uh, from the united states where we where pakistan actually could have uh, been better in the economic activities in pakistan where we had been requiring so much investments like china has been doing now in investment in infrastructure had us been also done this earlier we could have been uh, you know in much better economic situation uh, in the region actually so uh, instead investing in infrastructure we have been giving aid through us aid in certain matters where we do not need aid actually we need something concrete where pakistan get you know better economic activities in pakistan if that message will go down the line to the business community of the us they will also come and they will also invest in pakistan if the us government they invest in our know, infrastructure and other strategic uh, you know uh, you know uh, in- investments so what do you say about it sir please just in terms of the historical record uh, we should be clear the united states um, has uh, both invested in pakistan's infrastructure historically including dams and other uh and canal building and and other major enterprises uh indirectly through multilateral uh organizations including with US technologies and so on including in areas uh beside infrastructure of of education and elsewhere US investments in Pakistan going back decades uh, have been considerable and have uh played to the benefit of Pakistan's people over time uh and um so so i think historically we need to recognize that and then finally uh on trade and textiles ambassador munter mentioned that as well i think what we found is we continue to run into the same obstacle again and again and again which is um opening the door to pakistan's um textiles in the us market runs directly into certain entrenched american uh interests uh, i don't think that this has changed um but i also agree that perhaps we ought to be looking for different areas of material commercial cooperation going forward and not looking back to ones that have uh, repeatedly failed us uh, in the past i think i'm going to just uh, uh read out the last question and then thereafter our chairman is going to the closing remarks uh this question particularly uh, relates to dan's observation with regard to israel and uh, the muslim countries are getting closer close to israel recognized it but this gentleman is asking what israel is doing to address the grievances of palestinians look i i don't think that um the that anyone is suggesting that it's israel's shift on uh, issues having to do with palestinians and palestine that has brought about its uh, warming of ties with saudi arabia or or sorry with with other uh players in the in the arab world in the muslim world um it has everything to do with a broader uh strategic context which has i think more to do with iran and uh with many of these countries concern with iran but also to do with economic development because countries like the uae appreciate that israel's technology and opportunities for um tying into that are mutually beneficial and they're looking to uh advance that agenda so it's a a strategic agenda and an economic agenda and not a palestine focused agenda and to the extent that um that uh, pakistan may or may not be willing to sign up for those efforts that will i think determine pakistan's own position on israel but i would be very curious to hear moeed's uh perspective on this issue um because i haven't recently heard an an updated uh view from from pakistan on this 
Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, seminar or this webinar was conceived by our chairman, uh, Professor Ikram Segal. Uh, every now and then when you open the newspaper, you will find an article from him either in Urdu and English. He's a defense analyst, a soldier on the ground, fought the war, a pilot, running a huge security company in Pakistan. And we are honored that he is the chairman of the Karachi Council of Foreign Relations. I'm sure he is going to host you all in Karachi or in Islamabad whenever the situation gets better. There is a suggestion also to host a foreign policy conference by the KFCFR. We love to do that physically, but now I request uh, Honorable Ikram Sekhal Saab to, for his closing remarks. Thank you, Mohin Fidda Saab. I'm very grateful to you. First of all, let me thank uh, Ambassador Cameron Munter, my good friend and uh, fellow director on East West Institute for many years. And uh, also, uh, Dr. Daniel Markey straight away responded when I requested him. And obviously, we've seen the benefit of uh, two candid, fair-minded Americans on US-Pakistan policy. And I think that is most important, a candid conversation. And that candid conversation must carry on from our Pakistani interlocutors, and that I'm grateful uh, to Dr. Mohid Yusuf, uh, first of all, for having agreed to this. And uh, of course, his, uh, his contribution was magnificent. And of course, Dr. Uma Bakai, uh, you know, really, uh, it, uh, you know, she really brings a lot of luster to uh, all the discourse that takes place. And that's so we have had a good uh, discourse. I would just like to mention a few points. My first point is that Pakistan is not the same of 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Pakistan, as I discussed with my world economic friends, is a part of South Asia, is a part of uh, Central Asia, is a part of the Middle East. Uh, if you look at it, we are a, geo a, we are a geographical pivot. And as uh, Moise has talked about, we are onto geoeconomics with the BRI and the uh, and and uh, the uh, CPEC. We are actually, if you look at it, the gateway to Eurasia, the gateway to MENA, and the gateway to South and Southeast Asia. That if if India decides, uh, you know, to have a meaningful and good relationship with us. So things have changed. Uh, I kept on telling a lot of my Pakistani friends that every morning when we go for Fajr prayers, we should pray that Modi lasts for a long time in India. Because what he has done to India, as far as South Asia is concerned, Pakistan would never have accomplished in a thousand years. He has now got bad relations with Nepal. India has got bad relations with Sri Lanka. India has managed bad relations with Nepal, with, uh, with other countries and with Bangladesh. After having declared 2.5 million uh, Bangladeshis as alien in Assam, you, you think uh, the Bangladeshis uh, are very happy about it? So I think we should every day get up in the morning. And obviously what Moeed said is very relevant, that India is the belligerent here. With every country in this region, they have a problem. And it, Mr. Biden is a very fair-minded person. I, he is on record for saying that India has been using Afghanistan as a platform against Pakistan. This is on record. This is exactly what Senator John McCain said. And this is what Lindsey Graham said when he came with Senator John McCain to Pakistan. So the United States very well knows what India's role has been. First of all, using the Soviets and then as a platform against Pakistan, then the Americans as a platform against Pakistan. And now the only reason the deal with Afghanistan is now is coming to fruition is because India is out of the process. The day India went out of the process, we had headway. Yes, it has to be an Afghanistan-led process. It's going to be a messy thing. It's not going to happen quickly that everyone realizes, but it is better 
than the all out war that had been going on for the last 30 years so one has to be very clear about that now as far as uh, we are concerned i think and the americans should take a go back to bri and cpec we must have a neutral stance we must have a neutral stance because we cannot afford to be antagonistic towards iran and we cannot afford to be agnostic uh, and uh, animosity towards uh, saudi arabia so let us take it like this it's not a shia sunni thing let me tell you the positive thing pakistan is the only country a sunni country with the largest population of shias in our armed forces until today in 70 years of our existence more than 70 years not a single incident has taken part within the armed forces as far as shia and sunni is concerned all shia sunni thing has been sponsored from outside whether it's iran sponsored against saudi interest with the saudi against iran interest and now of course we know that india is trying to sp uh, sponsor terrorism because they openly said so. so i think that thing and i think i see a future good relationship united states provided we remain neutral as far as uh, china is concerned we have a good economic relation with china we are a gateway for china we are necessary for china to get into the middle east etc but at the same time it is in our interest to engage the united states and engage the united states positively and i like dan said and um, uh, ambassador cameron munter said it is the private sector which has to come in and realize where the money is made they will come and as i see it pakistan's gold coast from karachi to gwadar exists everybody talks about north south is the gold coast where you can have the same sort of Uh, 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 economic zones that were made in China, made etc., where you have our labor is much cheaper, much more skilled than that were in China or otherwise in Vietnam. So, I am very grateful for this. I'm very grateful to every one of you. Uh, and uh, uh, let me tell you, we are having another uh, um, uh, session this time with the foreign minister uh, in uh, in on the 19th of January, and I look forward. not to engage not to make this a one off thing but to engage with you in the future and to make sure that our relationship with united states lasts and we do not give it up as a transactional relationship like it has happened for the last 70 years thank you everyone thank you for being with us